Hey friends, I'm Renee with the Flippin' Tilbies. My husband and I renovate RVs full time and today we're going to be starting to reinstall the ceiling in this motorhome that we are currently working on right now. We ripped out the entire ceiling because it was that squishy material that was commonly used in older style motorhomes and we really want to update it and create something that looks more streamlined and something more modern. the entire ceiling out Sean rewired for new lights it used to have kind of the weird fluorescent lighting in here we're gonna do some really nice streamlined ones right down the middle it's gonna be a lot brighter in here than it was before and then we actually bought beadboard to replace the ceiling material and we bought sheet foam as well so we're going to do the beadboard and then we're going to trim it out and it's gonna look really beautiful so let's get started We purchased 10 sheets of half inch foam insulation to insulate the entire ceiling and we attached that using a foam specific construction adhesive. We used a razor blade to cut any nooks and crannies that we needed out of it and to fit it into place. And then once we got the glue on and the sheets put up, we used scrap pieces of wood to keep those panels up against the ceiling nice and tight during the cure period of the glue. We wanted to make sure to have a very nice adhesion. Now that the entire ceiling is covered with the insulation, it is time to move forward to our B-board panels, which is what we're going to use to cover the rest of the ceiling. Let's get going on that step. things that we did to make the installation of the B board a little bit easier is to mark the location of the ceiling trusses with a little piece of tape on the wall. This way when we were installing the B board we knew exactly where to drill the screw instead of having to guess. This made it way easier throughout the entire process of this project. Another thing that we did is we drew a diagram of everything in the ceiling. That way we knew where all the HVAC vents were, we knew where all of our electrical wiring was, and this allowed us to know exactly where everything was instead of just guessing. We used a table saw, a jigsaw, and a skill saw to cut the boards to size and fit on the ceiling. We also used a hole saw to cut small holes for the wires to come down for the lights and for the speakers. We used one and a half inch self drilling screws to attach the b-board to the ceiling and we placed all those screws in locations where we would have the future trim B so that we did not see any screw holes in the finished product. Because of the look that we wanted in the finished product, we put a full sheet of beadboard in the center and then we ripped down a full sheet of beadboard and did half sheets on each side. That way when we finished up with the trim, we had this really nice symmetrical look for the project. Using beadboard can be a little bit tricky and using a little bit more care when you are measuring and cutting and lining of your pieces is needed in order to ensure a really nice clean cohesive look with all of the lines. This is especially critical when you are lining the beadboard sheets end to end and you want to make sure that all of your lines are not only lined up but also straight. Once the entire ceiling was covered with the beadboard, it was time to pull out that diagram that we created earlier in the project and find the location of all of our HVAC vents. We used a two inch hole saw to go to the location uh, from our diagram where we knew the vent holes were and drilled up into the ceiling. This allowed us to get the vent holes dead on, or it's a lot harder to do that when you're cutting it below and then bringing it back up. Once all of the holes were drilled, it was time to get the trim boards up. We got two different types of trim board. Both were a prime MDF, one was a half inch by four inches, 
that was going to go the width wise and one was a one inch by six inch and that was to go the length wise. We put all the trim boards on the seams in between the beadboard and then we ripped down the one by four and a half and we used the one by two to trim out around all of the edges around the outside of the RV's ceiling. We attached all of the trim boards using a one and three quarter inch self-tapping screw and we did sink them a little bit into each one of the boards, allowing us to have a little bit of space to put putty into those holes, making it look super cohesive and covering up any evidence of any of the screw holes. After we installed the trim boards, we puttied over them, it was time to caulk the edges. We put a bead of flex caulking around the edges of every single trim board that we installed and between any of the cracks, creating a very finished look. After doing a little bit of quality control, sanding down any of the putty that needed it, we were ready to get priming. We used a gray coat airless sprayer to apply a gripper primer to the entire ceiling, and then we used the same sprayer to apply the Benjamin Moore Scuff X paint to the ceiling as well. Now all that's left to do is to reinstall all the vents, put up all the lights, and we have a completely finished, completely renovated, beautiful RV ceiling. We are super excited to move on to the rest of the reno and we're going to continue making videos like this as we go through the process. If you found this video helpful, we'd really appreciate a like and subscribe so we can continue making quality content like this to help you guys in your own renovation processes. Thanks so much for watching guys and happy RVing.